actually, before I get into the, the tech, I want to start by, um, by uh, welcoming two folks who are here uh, with me tonight. Um, my colleague, Piper O'Sullivan, a fellow assistant director in the Office of Study Abroad is here. Those of you who were at the general info session would have, uh, would have met her then. Um, so uh, uh, we are in the process of transitioning um, advising uh, portfolios right now. And um, where I have advised on St. Andrews over this past year, um, uh, this semester, I'll be handing things off to, uh, to Piper, who advises on several other programs uh, already. I you like that. It'll be lucky if the girl you said um, that to doesn't slap you like oh, that. Sorry, one sec. I remember staring at the situation uh, while it happened. Well, can you come no, up to I me? see. I've got somebody who's just joined in the meeting. If you don't you mind muting your audio. Um, it looks like I've got that ability. <laughs> Mute it. <laughs> awesome. Um, so uh, Piper will be taking over for me. She already advises on other uh, programs in the UK, um, yeah, several university programs in England and Ireland, and it's, uh, it's a natural sort of transition. She'll be uh, taking over uh, in St. Andrews. So grateful to have Piper here tonight. Um, and also super duper excited and grateful that, uh, that we have with us tonight um, uh, an alum of Holy Cross uh, who uh, has volunteered her time generously to be with you here tonight to talk about her uh, time at St. Andrews. So Lucy, thank you so much for being with us. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, you know, let us know, you know, when you went and what you majored in and all that good stuff. Yeah, um, so I just graduated in the spring and I spent my junior year abroad, so two years ago. Um, we got sent home a little bit early with COVID, but I got most of it in. Um, and yeah, I loved it there. So I haven't started working yet. So I figured I would jump in and talk about my time if anyone has questions. So it's awesome. Super, super grateful to Lucy. And uh, Lucy is, is a perfect case in point for you. Remember, if any of you attended my general info session when I was doing my, you know, goofy spiel about, you know, uh, uh, myths about study abroad and like, you know, certain majors who, you know, can't study abroad and particularly for, you know, for an academic year and this and that. So Lucy, as an accounting major, you, that's one of those where you hear the myth that you can't study abroad, period, let alone an academic year. And she's living proof that uh, that not only can you do it, but you can do it successfully, get a sweet job afterwards and uh, and be really successful. So really grateful to Lucy for being here. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and then we're going to start things off like with a like over the top dramatic uh, video introduction to the landscape of San Andrews, just to kind of give you a visual feel for what things look like there. So um, let's go ahead. Can everyone see my screen? So as you can see, it is a magnificent place. And hopefully that's all you need to, to, to see to know that it's St. Andrews is the place to go. It is um, a just picturesque, gorgeous, gorgeous um, part of the world in, uh, in Scotland, of course. And as you can see, it's coastal. It's in uh, a small town of 17,000 people on the, the eastern coast of Scotland. Uh, it's about 50 miles away from the capital, um, Edinburgh. And, uh, and it's just, as I said, breathtaking. Um, uh, if you're thinking about this program in, as a, in terms of understanding how it connects to the other programs that are available to you at Holy Cross, um, there are a couple of things to point out. The first is, as I said, just its, its size, right? So we have programs like you know, the University of Melbourne or the programs in let's say, um, you know, let's say Trinity, UCD that are in you know, major cities. Um, this is a program that's on the other end of that spectrum where you're in a, a small town. It's it, of the programs you have, it's in the, the probably the smallest um, town 
um, 17,000 people. The key thing to note about that though, is um, maybe that for one, maybe that's something that appeals to you. Um, if you have any concerns about that though, Lucy will be able to, to she's gonna kind of walk us through a little presentation in a minute to show you just how vibrant the town really is. The, the way that it's always characterized uh, to me is, is, is a, um, a small town with big city amenities, meaning that you've got you know, really lots of things to do to keep you, um, keep you busy. Um, you won't get bored um, at St. Andrews. Um, it's um, a, you know, got tons of history, um, first inhabited by folks, you know, 10,000, 5,000 5, BCE. Um, uh, the monastery that was established there in the eighth century is associated with, of course, the relics of St. Andrew. It's world famous for golf. It's known as the birthplace for golf. You can play on the uh, um, uh, uh, on the old course. It's absolutely magnificent. Um, uh, they've got um, the largest uh, ruins in in Scotland. Um, uh, we'll see some some images here um, of that. It's um, as I said, just in terms of you know physical beauty. It, it's it's there are a few places that that that, that meet it. Um, uh, here's just a couple of images to to give you flavor of this. Um, the University of St. Andrews as well, just in terms of thinking about it, um, often uh, what, I, what I say about it is, again, in, in connection with the other programs that we have at Holy Cross, if you're looking for a place that has, you know, as much of a sort of campus life, sort of a social uh, experience that's sort of built around, um, you know, campus life, in the way that Holy Cross, you know, as a residential, you know, liberal arts college is um, probably the closest that we get to that with um, our study abroad programs would be the University of St. Andrews. They have tons of campus traditions um, that uh, that go on. There's just a lot of school spirit um, in terms of the size of the, the, pop, the student population there as well. I think that's kind of um, important as well. Like, whereas, you know, again, to use uh, another program I advise on the University of Melbourne as an example, there's a university that is some 50,000 students uh, in terms of its population, whereas, you know, the undergraduate population at St. Andrews is 8,000, right? So still, you know, bigger than, than Holy Cross, but again, relative to the programs we have, it's one of the smaller student uh, populations. It's a really old place. Uh, it's the very first university in Scotland. So 1413, it's the third oldest university in the English speaking world. And some pretty, um, famous uh, uh, alums. So um, Lucy, of course, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, the, you know, King James of Scotland, you've got Prince William and Kate Middleton. I got to remove this JTT reference. I think that is well, you know, an ancient one. It's probably more for, for Piper and my, my generation. But the long and the short of it is that this is a place that is a, an absolute destination internationally um, and is home to just one of the best places, uh, best best uh, institutions of higher education in, in, in the world. And so it's a privilege to be able to have uh, the relationship that we do with St. Andrews and to be able to offer this as an opportunity for students. Um, so what I wanna do is I'm, I'm gonna open up now a, um, a, a, an awesome presentation that, that Lucy has uh, created um, to sort of reflect on her experiences uh, at St. Andrews. And then Lucy, as we, I'll let you sort of take the reins here. Um, and just, you know, tell me to click through as, as you need me to. Um, and she's going to guide you about, you know, on the student experience uh, that she had uh, during her time at St. Andrews. So, okay, fire away. Yeah, so I made this for last year's presentation. But um, this is just like an overview map of the town because like Chris said, it's like 17,000 people, but 10,000 of those people are the students. So it's kind of like the perfect college town because everyone that you're walking around with are all students. Um, so here's like the bird's eye view. So all the little yellow ones are like the main residence halls. So it's scattered throughout. Um, this whole like right area is like the downtown, which was made up of these three main streets. And then the far left is DRA, which is where I lived, which is like the biggest residence hall area. And it's basically like this whole community of like apartment buildings. They're all like four floors tall. And like you have your own bedroom, your own bathroom, but you share like a common space in the kitchen with four or five other students. Um, and DRA to town is about a mile and there's a cute little path. So it's really easy to walk everywhere. And a lot of kids get a bike, but you can take the bus, you can walk. I walked almost every day everywhere. 
Um, and then there's the golf course, like Chris mentioned, there's the beaches, there's um, the union, which is like the student kind of like Cool Beans lobby area, but they also have like a bar and a club and like a lot of like advisor kind of stuff up top. Um, Tesco's in red is the grocery store. So it's super easy to like go to class in town, shop for dinner, walk back with your groceries and then cook for yourself, which is what I did. Um, but it's super, super accessible. So I guess we can go to the next slide. Um, so this was my apartment in DRA. So we have like the full kitchen, which was really easy to cook in. Um, your own bedroom, bathroom. Laundry wasn't in the building, which was a little bit annoying with the rain, but it wasn't too bad. Um, DRA with like, so you can see in the bottom right, that's a picture like on the path in DRA. So those are what the little buildings look like. And there's probably like 20 of those buildings. So there's like two laundry buildings, I think. Um, so you just have to walk like two minutes down the path with your laundry, uh, which is really easy. And then that's my kitchen. They do all these like cleaning inspections, which was kind of different from Holy Cross. Um, like Holy Cross, like they take out your trash in your room, but because you have a whole apartment, you have to like clean up everything. So they actually inspect you once a month and they'll leave like a post-it that says like, inside of your microwave it was too dirty like we're coming back in a week and if you haven't cleaned it we're going to charge you for cleaners to come in and clean it because this is unacceptable so we failed our oven inspection like three times because we couldn't get the glass on the inside like sparkling clean um so this was the night before the inspection when we realized we didn't have paper towels and tesco's was closed and we were trying everything we could so we didn't get charged like 50 pounds to have a cleaner come in and do it um, but I was really lucky. I was friends with all my flatmates. So we all got along really well and had a great time in the apartment. We were also on the ground floor. So in the top, my grandparents came to visit at one point. Um, and all my friends, we joked because we always like climbed through the window. So my grandma wanted to climb through the window to get in. <laughs> Lucy, uh, I don't want to interrupt the flow, but, but since you mentioned your flatmates, can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, so I was one of five in our flat. And like I said, we had our own bedroom and bathroom. Of the five of us, one of them was also a study abroad student from Middlebury. Um, so she was also a third year. Two of them were freshman boys from Scotland, one of them from like the Highlands area and one of them from Glasgow. And then one of them was a girl from Hong Kong. So it was really cool because they were first years, but like, I had another study abroad kid with me that I didn't know. So that was a new friend. And then we just like really got along with the first years. And um, one of the, the boy from Glasgow, he went to a private school there where half of his high school goes up to St. Andrews. So a lot of his friends were there. So we kind of just clung on to him and got completely like thrown into this friend group of 18 year old Scottish boys, which was so much fun because they're so different than like all the people I knew from Holy Cross. Um, but so this picture, the guy in these two is Wallace, who is from the Highlands. Um, so they all, it was really nice having like a few Scottish people that I was friends with because all their friends, like even from like other universities in Scotland would come up and visit. And I'm still in touch with all of them and like send them letters and FaceTime them every few weeks. Um, so like I said earlier, everything's super, super walkable. So this was the left photo was walking from DRA to town. So there's like a little path. Um, it goes past like the athletic fields and then you get to like all the science buildings. So the science buildings are right on the left and then there's more housing up on the right and then you keep going up and you're into town. And then there's this castle, which you kind of get to just past that other stuff. Um, and then this picture on the right is just one of the main streets with like a cathedral church in the background at night and beautiful. Um, so these were just some pictures like of campus kind of buildings around. So in the top left, St. Mary's Library, that was where I liked to go. I think it was technically within the psych department, but anyone could get in. Um, but it was like really small and that library felt kind of like Holy Cross because it was like the old feeling with like books everywhere and like the old wooden tables rather than like the modern bright light that like a lot of other buildings could be at like different schools. 
Um, you can see there's another photo of like the path next to the main library that was like in town. So that library was like really modern and everything. Um, the quad, Chris showed a few photos of that at the beginning with just like the overview of St. Andrews. That had um, most of the academic buildings for like humanities were around there. So that's one thing is like they have their science buildings and then they have their humanities buildings. So they're kind of separate and the humanities are all like in town whereas science is like on that path. So it's a bit of a walk. Um, but if you're going from like DRA where most of the kids live, it's super easy because it's halfway. Um, and then the econ department, I was an accounting major. So I took a finance class over there is absolutely beautiful. It's right on the water as is like the philosophy building and a few others. So in your classes, you're literally like looking out at the beach, which was really cool. And you're in this building that feels kind of like a mini castle. Uh, these are more pictures just from around town. So like everything is kind of built around ruins. So like the top left is just like a road that you can drive through, but you're driving through this archway that feels all like medieval. Um, they put these like lights up around Christmas time and then they leave them for a while, which just feels really cute because like they're all like in the second photo you can see just hanging like in the sky. Um, this is the church over on South Street, I think. And then there's like the famous cathedral down in the bottom that's like one of the first pictures you'll see if you Google St. Andrews. And then there's the bits of a rainbow from my dorm window because um, there were a lot of rainbows. And then more pictures of the cathedral and the ruins and just the cute little stone houses on the road. And the roads were all really quiet. There weren't many cars. Um, so one of the like big traditions for St. Andrews is May Dip, which is basically, so they have this tradition of academic families where third year students will like adopt new students and first years mostly. And when they do this, it's kind of like upperclassmen taking underclassmen under their wing and being like, we're gonna have these family potluck dinners and you're gonna come to the bars with me. And like, we're gonna just kind of make sure you kind of find your way. Um, and a lot of people will stay friends with their academic families. And the whole point of May Dip is you're supposed to like, if you commit like an academic sin, which is like kind of set by your family, but it's also kind of just general stuff of like, there's certain letters on one of the roads and you can't walk across it. Cause if you walk across it, it said that you're gonna fail all your finals. So like everyone avoids this square on the sidewalk. So that's technically an academic sin. Um, so if you commit an academic sin within the year, May Dip is like your cleanse. So it's basically, it's like the first day of May, I think. And everyone like runs into the water at sunrise and goes swimming or skinny dipping. And it's absolutely crazy. Um, so there was a practice one in like October and I had no idea it was a thing, but my flatmates were like, oh, we're staying up all night to go swimming at sunrise. And I was like, oh, you're absolutely crazy. Like we have classes tomorrow. Why are you doing that? Like, you silly freshman. And they were like, oh, like there's a practice made if whatever, like it'll be fun, just do it. And I was just hanging out with them, like on the couches, watching TV and stuff. And then it was like 4 a.m. And I was like, oh, the sun's rising in like an hour and a half. So I might as well stay up at this point. And I went and there was like a big group for another hall that was to going. And it was so much fun because we just like, we went, we dropped all our stuff. We ran into the water. It was freezing cold. It was like 6 a.m. The sunrise was beautiful. We walked back and then we all went to class in like two hours, which was kind of crazy. Um, but it was like probably one of my favorite memories from the year. And then I'm also really glad it happened because then we got sent home mid-March. So we didn't get to have like a real May dip, which I was seeing all the photos from last year of my friends that were still over there. And it was just like complete chaos because like COVID was still kind of going on. And like everyone still like swarmed the beach. So I can't imagine like the real one, like no COVID, no like, like real May Dip would be really cool. Um, so Raisin Weekend is another big thing with your academic family. So this is kind of like 
it's probably the biggest thing with your academic family because it's in October, I think, like mid-October it was. And basically, so your academic family, the parents will like adopt you at some point, usually in the first week or so when you get there during freshers week. And um, they'll like invite you over for dinners and stuff like up until Raisin Weekend, which is like the peak where there's this big like foam fight where they like pick a costume for you and you get like all dressed up into this thing. And then you go to this foam fight with like shaving cream and it's just like there's cannons blowing it out and you're throwing it on everyone. And I don't really know what the point of it is, but it's a lot of fun. But then the day before that is like a really big like scavenger hunt, not hazing, but like the parents like have like all these obscure tasks for you to do around town and you go around. So this was all the kids in my family. The parents aren't in these pictures. It's just the kids. But um. So like the day before they sent us on like this huge scavenger hunt and it's like get this from this store take a photo in front of this car at this house and like we're doing all of this and like take a shot of this or whatever like all this crazy stuff and like we have no idea what the point of any of it is but it's like now that my friends are third years over there they're like adopting and dealing with all of this now and it's like oh take a photo in front of this car of this person because it's like their friend's house and like it's all like just a joke for the third years, but it's really fun as like the first year of the new kid because you're bonding and going through all of this. But it was a lot of fun. I hope these are, yeah. <laughs> um, so this big photo was like my big like friend group when I was over there. Um, in the photo, there's me and two other Holy Cross kids, and then the girl from Middlebury, who is my, one of my flatmates, and me and Louisa, my Middlebury flatmate, um, both like to cook. So we were super set on having like a Thanksgiving dinner and cooking for all of our friends because they were all Scottish or English. So we spent a ton of money and a ton of time, and we cooked they didn't have turkeys. So we cooked like, or the turkeys might've been really expensive. We cooked like five chickens, like 10 pies, mashed potatoes, stuffing, everything. And then set up, like we stole all of like their apartment's coffee tables, put them all out in the middle of our common room, bought a big white tablecloth, paper plates, and like had a Thanksgiving, which was a ton of fun. And all of our friends were like, this is crazy. Like, oh my gosh, all this food. Cause like they'd never had it before. But um, in Scotland, they have a holiday called Burns Day, which I think it's in February. It was kind of towards the end, right before I got sent home. But um, it's like kind of their version of Thanksgiving where they cook like haggis and like uh, turnips and potatoes and like a few other random things. So they were like, OK, you cooked us Thanksgiving. We'll do like a Burns Day celebration for you. So in February or whenever it was we went over to like a smaller group to one of my friend's places and they played the bagpipes for us and cooked us haggis and I didn't like it but other people did um and the potatoes and everything and it was a lot of fun um so there's a ton of like social life stuff at St. Andrews um you probably know like William and Kate went there and met there and Kate was involved in all these fashion shows and that's like one of the big things but they have all of these like crazy parties and balls so there's opening ball which is in like the first month when you get there and it's all like long dresses and like boots and tie um there's the fashion shows in the spring so I went to the don't walk show the fashion shows are definitely like mostly like the really like posh and like American kind of people um my friends all made fun of it because they were 18 year old Scottish boys and they're like oh you're going to the fashion show that's literally like all the Americans and the rich English but it was a ton of fun um you get to dress up DRA ball was for my hall so there's like different hall balls too which are all in the spring um there was a Gatsby party which was like not school sponsored but it was like some oh also so like all the postgrads and undergrads kind of like mingle and like all the clubs are mixed so like people know each other um but there was a postgrad from somewhere and he like threw himself a birthday party and there was like a Facebook group and like everyone was like trying to get into this party 
and somehow me and my friends got in and there was like alpacas there and like it was absolutely wild um a lot of my friends were on the rugby team so we went to the mo rugby ball at christmas time Sentech was a big like techno night because that's really big over there um and this is only like a fraction of the balls because they're kind of expensive so I recommend you definitely go to one but you don't need to go to all of them because like opening ball might have been cheap I feel like that was like 50 pounds but like some of them are upwards of like 100 pounds and then if you want to buy a dress like it can get kind of pricey the fashion shows are definitely really pricey the hall balls were like definitely a good deal because your hall like fundraised for it and sponsored it so that was like maybe a ten dollar ticket um but definitely take advantage and go to at least one of those um there's all sorts of good food around town i cooked for myself there's two different meal plans you can be catered or self-catered so catered basically means that you have like dining hall swipes but rather than swipes like Kimball, they have like set meal times. So they'll have like breakfast in your dorm building from like eight to 10. So you have to go from eight to 10 to get breakfast. You can go to lunch from 12 to one and dinner from five to seven or whatever it is. Whereas self-cater, you just have a kitchen and you can cook for yourself and you don't pay for a meal plan. So I was self-catered, which I really liked because I like to cook for myself, but there's tons of stuff to go out. So like there's a really good donut place, Fisher and Donaldson, taste there were so many cafes um and so many like student deals too so like matzo is a pizza place in town that was six pounds before six so you could get a whole personal pizza for yourself for only six pounds if you went before six basically any day all year um i'm blanking on the name of the upper right place that was like the late night food so like after the bars and everything you get fries or chips what they call them um Empire oh yeah that one's Empire the other place is Dervish which is like across the street um really good ice cream at Janetta's Forgans is in the bottom right which is a chain but it's really good with like fun fancy dinners but all sorts of good food everywhere Cottage Kitchen was one of my favorites um they had really good like scones and just like lunch food stuff um, my grandma and my aunt came to visit me and they loved it the first day. So we went back every single day for like four days because they wanted another scone and more tea. Um, and now my friend Gabby, who's over there as a full-time student is actually working. So it's really funny because like, I wish she was working there when I was there, but. Um, so this was some of the stuff to do. Um, my friend was on the polo team, so they had, she's always rode horses, but there were people that didn't know how to ride, and you just, like, went to lessons every week, um, but I watched her compete on, like, beach chuckas at Old Sands. I took golf lessons all year, because I'd never golfed before, but St. Andrews is the home of golf, so I figured I might as well learn, so that was, like, 120 pounds maybe for a semester's worth of golf lessons like every week and you got like money to go to the driving range so I'd go to my weekly lesson where I was actually friends with two postgrads um someone from Italy and someone from Monaco which was really cool um and then one of my friends from Holy Cross that was over there is a really like big golfer so he was always like on the old course like so tagged along one day and got on the old course because I was not enough to like actually get on the list to really play um but it was a lot of fun and then Castle Sands on the right is just one of the beaches um I think there's three beaches in town so I never got to swim because we got sent home too early other than the practice may dip in the fall but you can still like walk around and there were these rocks. So this was like actually a week before we knew we had to go home. And we just like went out one day and we're walking around and like still one of my favorite memories. And I like, I think I had my laptop in that bag too, which was not great. Um, but we we're just like walking on the rocks, like in the middle of the water. And it was really great. <laughs> um, I wanted to uh, make a point uh, for, uh, athletic and, and, and certain categories of like cultural and artistic activities. 
Um, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but just, uh, you know, for example, in talking about like the golf uh, costs, if you get yourself involved in some sort of athletic like club or something that has, you know, startup fees to, to participate, you have a budget over the course of the, 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 the academic year um, of $200. Uh, so, you know, hold on to your receipts for those things and then send them to me and I'll forward them on to our budget and billing coordinator. And you get reimbursed up through two hundred dollars total for for that period of time to offset some of those those costs. Because what we value about those things is that they're an opportunity, particularly for like the organized like sports, like what is like team sports stuff. Like it gives you a chance to to um, to get to know you know uh, local students and, and integrate. Um, so yeah, just a uh, little pro tip there. Yeah, I did that, and I got all my money back um, for the first semester, and then like part of my money back for the second semester because I did the golf lessons all year. But um, another thing I forgot to mention was like definitely join some sort of team or club because they have socials every week. So their like going out schedule was way different than Holy Cross and rather than like Friday, Saturday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It was like Tuesdays and Fridays, I think, were their big nights or Tuesday, Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, because like Tuesdays or Wednesdays was like your social which means that whatever team or club you were associated with would like all get together at like someone's house or at one of the local bars. Um, and like everyone would go out and then meet at the student union, which I had shown on like that first map on the first slide. And um, it was just a ton of fun. Cause like I'd go to the golf socials and we'd go to the golf house and like I'll hang out for a few hours and then meet up at the union. And then all of your friends that are on every other sports team or club would also be there and a lot of times they were themed so like you're dressed up in like all white and then like your friends on rugby are all wearing like suits and ties and then your friends on polo are wearing like button down head like random little costumes um but yeah so definitely join some sort of club I, I just want to uh, echo um, Lucy's suggestion there that's something if you have any advising sessions with me I'm going to probably say it over and over again St. Andrews is, is one of those places where it's if you get yourself connected and and involved and athletics is, is often a really great thing to do. And I'll get into that in a sec, but it's one of those places where get yourself involved as much as possible in these kind of organized things that's sort of like where you're disciplined to like get together on a weekly basis with folks. Um, it's the folks who do that end up having like this like really rich, like vibrant, like active social experience. If you're the type where you like you wait to do those things, you focus a little bit on classes and then like maybe later on try to do it. It can be a place that can feel kind of isolating because much as I said, because so much of the social life is built around, you know, campus life and these these kinds of things. If you don't get yourself connected, it can be isolating. But if you do get yourself connected, again, it's just like as I think Lucy Lucy has made clear, like there's just so much to tap into. It's just a question of making sure that you go and do it. Also on, on the, the athletics note. Um, the culture of athletics at St. Andrews is very different. I think it's fair to say than, but especially in, you know, the United States, like D1, like, you know, like where there's like this cutthroat sort of like, you know, GERD sort of, you know, everything, it's all like hyper competitive and at St. Andrews. It's, 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 it's different. There may be certain sports that, that, you know, there's some amount of that, but overall, I think and Lucy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like, there's a, a sense that it's, it's, it's about having fun. It's about like the recreation of it. And then, and then it's about the social aspect of it, right? So you have your, your, you know, your practices and so on and so forth, but then often you get together afterwards and you go and, 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 and you hang out. So it's just an awesome way to, to like sort of plug and play, like tap into a social community there. So even if you don't consider yourself an athlete, join something, you know what I mean? Like there's like Shinti is this, this like uh, Scottish, uh, um, uh, sport that's that's kind of like I think field hockey. Um, Aggressive field hockey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our students have have said that like I just I just decided to join and they had an awesome experience. You know what I mean? They have like Quidditch. They have some like cr you know crazy different things to do. But it's 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 one of those things where like you get yourself involved in those and you'll have just a, a really fabulous um, uh, social experience. Yeah, and they also had for most of the sports teams there was like a ones team, twos team, and threes team where like ones is the most competitive like varsity level and then threes are like kids that have never played it before um or just like if it's a more competitive sport then threes is like your club team 
So I played lacrosse my whole life and kind of played club at Holy Cross and thought like, oh, it would be cool to play that in another country. This would be really cool. So I went to, they also had this thing called give it a go, which is like in the first few weeks where you could give it a go at any one of the sports and you just go to the practice or whatever and try it out. And like, if you didn't want to play, you didn't have to, but it's kind of like, just like a practice session. Um, so I went to that and I went to like the first few weeks of lacrosse and I made it onto like the ones team, which was like their varsity, whatever, which I like wasn't expecting, but like Chris said, like sports aren't as serious over there. So like they were good, but like it was more commitment than I wanted to do. And I decided I just wanted to do golf lessons instead of like an actual sport. But if you want an actual sport, you can have that or you could drop down to like the twos team or the threes team. And like by actual sport, I think it was still practice like three days a week in the gym, like two days a week. So it was nothing compared to like D1 at Holy Cross. But um, yeah, it's definitely very good. So you have lots of points of entry. So again, I I couldn't, I I can't more strongly recommend that you go, that you go in that, in that direction. Um, Nope. There's tons of pubs in town. And like, now that I'm like, 22 in like the Boston area I miss it so much because everything's walking distance so you don't have to worry about like Ubers or anything um there are taxis but within like the three main roads of town I think that one of my flatmates his parents got him like a book of like over 50 pubs in St. Andrews but there's probably like 10 to 20 that people like actually go to so like if you want a night out you can go to like you can pub hop around. Um, we loved Molly Malone's. One of my friends is a bartender there now. Aikman's, The Rule. Um, one of these photos is the Student Union, which is like their Cool Beans pub kind of thing. But um, there's so many options and like, it's all just a lot of fun. The Keys in the center, I wanted to go to all year because it was always like old men golfers in it. And they just seemed like your super stereotypical, like, scotland ireland like pub and um you can't really see in the picture because there's so many but all those flowers in the front were in golf cleats and so the day before i went home i got one of my friends to go with me and it was saint patrick's day and we got a pint of guinness and we were the youngest people in there by probably 40 years um but it was a lot of fun (laughs) And I made tons of new friends that I'm still in touch with. Um, One of my flatmates is living in England now and we are pen pals. So we send each other letters like about once a month when we get around to it. I went on trips with them. Um, One of the things that I really liked about St. Andrews was because it was so immersive, I went on a few trips on my own, but mostly like around like the holiday schedule rather than like during the year. Um, so I like actually learned to ski in France with all of them because well, they were all big skiers and one of them had a house in France. So I invited myself along and that was a ton of fun. Um, but yeah, I totally recommend St. Andrews. <laughs> cool. Thank you for this, this awesome presentation, Lucy. Um, I'm going to have you camp out if you still have time, Lucy, just to go through just a couple more slides on my end, uh, and then we'll kind of open things up to, to, um, to general, you know, questions from everyone. Um, so, and I'll, I'll probably ask you to weigh in on certain things here and there. So just to talk a little bit about, um, about academics at, uh, at St. Andrews. So, um, and then sort of, you know, some basic eligibility. Um, so, uh, the, um, the program is open in principle to students of any any major. Um, uh, you know, there are certain uh, disciplines that, that may have more course offerings than, than others. Um, uh, if you're interested at all in St. Andrews, you just set up a meeting with me and we'll talk through the, the details of how that went, might work out with your specific program of study. Um, the cumulative GPA that's expected for, for applicants is a 3.2 um, or higher. Uh, what I said in the general info session, I'll say again here, which is that um, let if you're you know concerned about GPA, let's say you're borderline, um, still submit an application to St. Andrews if it's your top choice, um, uh, and let again let us be the ones to decide ultimately that you're not eligible based on GPA because often what ends up happening is students will be borderline and then um, 
and then you know by the end of this semester or the end of next they're able to bring their gpa up into the the target you know um uh you know sort of range that we're looking for and be able to make it work um on that note too just uh, uh so you know the ad admissions decisions in terms of eligibility are based at least on the first you know go uh, when we initially review your applications they're based on your cumulative gpa as of the conclusion of the current semester that you're in right so when we get to you know when we get your grades for the fall for you know sometime in mid-december it'll be that cumulative gpa that we'll use um and evaluate when we're making admissions decisions um but again if st andrews is your top choice you should apply to st andrews um let's see here um a, a full course load abroad is equal to a full course load of holy cross i, I make that a point because the point of mentioning that because um you know, in certain places when you study abroad, the number of courses you take will be exactly the same as at Holy Cross. You know, four course loaded, you know, at Melbourne is a good example. I know I keep bringing it up, just, but it's a good, you know, the reference point. So uh, four courses at Holy Cross, full time course load, and Melbourne is also four courses. St. Andrews is a place where uh, that is not the case. Um, in fact, it's, it's often, it can be tricky to, to get, a, you know, things to line up with four courses. I'll show you a brief slide just to kind of give you an overview of what that looks like. But it's one of those places where um, you want to sit with me and we'll kind of map things out and, and, and get a, um, sort of acquainted with their, their local waiting system to make sure that, um, you know, that you're planning appropriately for your, for your programs of study. Um, just as you're kind of, pers you know, uh, browsing, let's say their, their, their module uh, catalog, um, or, you know, their, their um, list of, of classes. Um, just a key note on some, uh, some Scottish English uh, tips here. So when you see the word course, that means more sort of course of study, um, you know, or major. It doesn't mean like a class, like it would mean here. And um, and uh, what you're looking for, if you want to look up their course catalog, look up module um, uh, list of modules at St. Andrews, and that'll come up with the the module catalog, which is the equivalent of what our course catalog would be. So module is class or course. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience uh, with um, with academics at St. Andrews, Lucy? Yeah, so I was an accounting major philosophy minor. Um, so I was only able to take one accounting class over there. So I took a lot of philosophy and a few like general ed requirements. So my fall semester, I was actually only in two classes because I was taking upper level philosophy classes. Um, that I had done the prereqs for at Holy Cross. So a normal course load over there is usually about three classes. So I was only taking two. Um, and my schedule is actually kind of crazy. I had class two days a week, um, which was completely different from all of my friends who had class all four or five days a week. Um, whereas in the spring semester, I took three classes that were all like first year, second year entry level courses. Um, I took a history, I took a different philosophy elective, and I took um, the finance class. Um, so the academics are definitely very different over there because rather than Holy Cross where it's only like 20 kids in a class, if you're in the entry level classes, it's usually like big lecture halls with like maybe 100 kids, and that will meet like two or three times a week, and then you'll have a tutorial like once or twice a week which will be with like the 15, 20 kids. So the upper level classes are all like smaller though, kind of like Holy Cross. So my semester was kind of, or my year was kind of weird because it was sort of backwards where the first semester I was in like the small classes with kids my own age. Whereas the second semester I was in like the first year classes with a hundred kids and then the tutorials, um, but yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about, let me jump ahead to a, to a, to a slide on, on academics. So just. You know, we, I, I alluded to this a bit in the um, in the general pre-departure, but one of the the probably the, the what's often the most significant source of, of of culture shock for students going to our universities in English speaking countries is the academic systems that they encounter there and sort of instructional differences and so on and so forth. Um, I think in general, uh, there's a sense that you know expectations for students in in our your you know our, our, our university systems in Europe. The expectation is that there's a lot more independence on the part of the student in terms of you know um, organizing their own learning, you know, say taking ownership of of, of that learning. Um, they're not following up with you in the same sort of way that they do at Holy Cross. They're not sort of you know giving you tons of, of like mini assignments throughout the the semester. 
Um, often there's, you know, one or two sort of major assignments that can account for your whole grade. Um, you know, one to two sort of like a midterm and a final that, that can count for, for a significant proportion of your grade. Um, so, um, again, there's an expectation that you're, you're, you're approaching your work in a more independent sort of way. Uh, St. Andrews is a place that um, I would say, uh, relative to others, it has a, a pretty strong student support uh, system there in terms of like the administrative offices you can reach out to if you're feeling sort of, um, you know, like you're, you're having a hard time, you know, adapting. Um, they have, you know, different workshops that they do to be able to support students in terms of, you know, prepping for different aspects of the experience that you can take advantage of. Um, Lucy, can you tell us a little bit about just your experience adapting to maybe like the, the differences in, in instruction? And, and did you perceive the differences in instruction to be, you know, like along the lines of what I'm talking about? Yeah, they were definitely a lot more independent. Um, when I was in the upper level classes, we had two assignments total per class. So it was like a midterm paper that was like 30% of your grade and then a final paper that was like 70% of your grade. Um, they were definitely like very accessible in office hours though. Um, and it was kind of funny because I feel like the like normal students there don't take them up on the office hours as much because I went to the office hours like three times prepping for my papers. And they're like, oh, like you're back again. And I was like, yeah, like at Holy Cross, like if I have an exam and I don't know what's going on, I will be in the office hours every single day. And like, that's the norm. I feel like a lot of people do that. Um, so just because like the other students don't do that, like still do that. Um, but in the underclassmen, like the second semester, those classes, it was a little bit more coursework than the upper level because you're still like a young first year, second year traditionally. Um, but it was still like your final was like 60%, your midterm was like 30% and then 10% was like your weekly tutorial homework. Um, but it like is 10% of your grade, which was like nothing compared to like the two exams. But um, the other really big thing was their grading system is really different. So it's out of 20 points instead of like 100. And it's a really weird kind of scale. But the thing that like was really weird to me was first and second years their grades don't matter. It only matters that they pass the class to get into honors level, which is third year up. So they just need to get a seven, which is like a C in order to move on. And it doesn't make any difference if they get a seven or if they get a 19. So they definitely like don't put as much effort into the academics. So since a lot of abroad kids end up living with first years um, because of like we're new students to the school and we're there for the full year, um, your flatmates and like the people around you might be just working to get that C, whereas like this will you're, go on. you're applying your Holy Cross work ethic in and doing, <laughs> treating it as if it were a Holy Cross course. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a super helpful context. Um, what was I going to say? Um, uh, so, oh, that's that 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 reminds me just to, to reiterate a point that I, I think I, I can't remember if I'd mentioned in the general info session, which is that um, one uh, important detail about the way grades work during study abroad is that um, is that your GPA, uh, you know, your cumulative GPA, the number uh, is not affected by what you do in terms of your grades over, overseas when you go abroad, right? So um, let's say you have, you know, uh, a 3.2 uh, at the end of your sophomore year and you go to St. Andrews, you take your courses, no matter what happens there, when you start your fall semester of your senior year, you will still have a 3.2. So what you'll get though, you'll get, um, St. Andrews will send us um, your, a, a, you know, a St. Andrews transcript that'll have uh, the titles of, of each of the, 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 the courses that you've taken there. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, their, um, a grade in their local system, the registrar will then convert that, that, you know, Scottish grade into a U.S. grade, um, based on, you know, the Holy Cross grading system. And then that a letter grade will appear on your transcript next to the title for that, for that course. So on your transcripts, that, that, that will be what, what appears there. And so, um, in general, again, that uh, when it comes to then moving on to the next step, so grad school and this and that, when you, you know, it, it, when you graduate, again, your, your GPA won't be affected by this period of time, but it's important to, to note that, that there are certain grad schools we've been told, like let's say in, in, in certain law schools that will, you know, the, the will sort of calculate for themselves your GPA based on those letter grades. So 
Um, so just to be just to be aware of that. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm not going to get into the, this uh, in too great a depth, but just again, just to illustrate that it's important to be sort of um, uh, 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 proactive in terms of planning and, and preparing for um, the, the local credit system. So you can, you know, uh, be planning your cor courses effectively. Um, that at, at St. Andrews, as you're, per, you know, exploring the module catalog, uh, what you need ultimately, it's an academic year program. This is important to, to make uh, really clear, um, is that um, uh, St. Andrews is an academic year only program expected to be there for fall and, and, um, and spring semesters. And so what you need over the course of that year is 120 credits in the local system. And so obviously half and half that breaks down to 60 credits and 60 credits. It doesn't always work out sort of uh, seamlessly to get to that exact 60. So what we advise students is to make sure that you're between 60 and 70 credits in the local system, right? So 15 credits, if you divide that evenly, you know, four ways is 15 credits is equivalent to one Holy Cross credit towards graduation. The challenge is, as I'm sure, you know, uh, Lucy can attest to, there are very few courses that are 15 credit courses, right? Some courses in psychology, uh, um, you know, upper division courses tend to be 15 credits, but outside of that, they're, they're not terribly common. So getting a four 15 credit module sort of schedule basically doesn't happen. More common is a situation where you would get, um, where most of the common area courses that are, um, are you know, uh, first and second year courses as, as, as Lucy had mentioned, um, these are almost all 20 credit modules, which means that, you know, you could have a semester where you're taking all, um, all common area courses, all first and second years, and then that would be three of those. So three 20 credit modules to bring you to 60, 60 credits. Um, in any of these configurations, you'll notice that it's what you're getting in terms of the the um, the 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 the, va the weighting that comes back to Holy Cross, like the credits you get towards graduation, is always going to be four, no matter what configuration of, of of modules you take. In terms of you know if it's four 15 credit courses or three 20 credits, you'll always be getting four credits towards graduation. What varies is the number of requirements that you can potentially satisfy with these modules. Again, this will be something that we discuss one-on-one -on -one in terms of how this works in, in each of your majors. Um, but just to know that you will get, each of these is considered a full-time course load. Um, another way that it often works out is in the humanities and social sciences. Um, often the, uh, you'll have sort of double weighted um, uh, modules um, where at, at your philosophy courses, Lucy, was that, um, were these 30 credit modules? Yeah, because they were the upperclassmen ones. Exactly. Yeah, so third and fourth year um, uh, modules in, um, and again, as I said, uh, humanities and social sciences are typically these double weighted ones. So you could be in a situation where you're only taking um, uh, two uh, modules total, but they're double weighted courses. It's, it's the amount of work that's equivalent um, to two courses built into one. Um, and so that's one uh, possible configuration. And then if you happen to be double majoring, let's say in psych and, and, and you know, another course, you could have two 15 credit courses and pair with, you know, with one, you know, upper division, you know, humanities and social science. There's a whole bunch of different ways that it can, it can work out. Um, bottom line is you and I will, will, uh, will, or will, um, or actually I should say moving forward, uh, um, you and, uh, and Piper will, will, will sit down and, uh, and review this and kind of get a sense of how the, the weighting system works and, and come up with, you know, some various configurations that, that might make sense for you. Don't, you don't, don't, don't uh, stress it, uh, this right now. This is just, I wanted to give you a sense of just to, the, the main point of this slide is just, it's something that you want to, um, uh, you know, plan for in advance. Um, we already talked about housing. So just to, to uh, just a quick note on the, the catered versus uncatered. Um, again, yeah, some you have, when you apply for housing at St. Andrews, you indicate your preferences. Um, they do a pretty good job of honoring your preferences as far as whether you want to be in a housing situation where you have a meal plan, or do you want to be in a housing situation where you don't have a meal plan? The advantages of the meal plan are if you're not someone who likes to cook, food is you know prepared for you and you don't have to bother with it. The disadvantage at St. Andrews, as I think Lucy had alluded to, is that um, is that you don't have quite the, the scheduling flexibility that you have at, at Holy Cross. So it's one of those things where if like you happen to have a class that overlaps with the, the time that I don't know dinner is offered, you know you're you have to you're on your own for that for that particular meal. They only are offered during those sort of fixed time windows. Um, so some students prefer to go in the self-catered direction because of that. Um, again, the choice is ultimately yours and we can talk about it, um, talk about it more. 
Um, anything else you want to share about housing, um, Lucy? Um, most people live in like DRA and enjoy that for study abroad because like you are an upperclassman, so it's nice to have your own room and stuff. Um, and the self catered, I definitely would recommend if in your rankings. Um, so finances, so there's no additional fee to study abroad. Um, as I mentioned in the general info session, um, you'll be billed Holy Cross room and tuition. Um, so exactly what you pay at Holy Cross. Um, the, it, the amount that you uh, pay for board fees will be dependent on whether you're in one of these, you know, catered uh, meal plans or whether you're self catered, you know, to, so no meal plan. If you're not receiving any food by the program, then you won't get charged any board fees. Um, uh, as I mentioned, there's that, um, that awesome budget that you should take, you know, advantage of the reimbursement plan where you can um, get reimbursed for those, uh, you know, club membership fees, athletics, arts, et cetera. Definitely take advantage of that. Um, one thing that we'll talk about on the next slide, just to, for me personally, um, I, I like to be as transparent as possible about, you know, some of the finances so that you can be prepared for it. Again, we make a really good faith effort to try to keep the cost as, as, as close to what you pay at Holy Cross as possible. But there are things that, you know, cost that, that you know, you can't expect. And we try to, you know, uh, make you aware of those so that you can begin planning appropriately for them. Um, uh, again, as I mentioned in the general info session, you're responsible for purchasing your own tickets um, up front and arranging your travel to, uh, to St. Andrews. Um, we'll, of course, give you the dates and guidance on, you know, where and how you should book those, um, those tickets. But it's ultimately your responsibility to purchase them. Uh, and then you'll receive uh, um, a, a credit in your... Um, in your billing account for uh, Holy Cross in the amount of an uh, average round trip ticket from Boston to, to St. Andrews. Um, so it essentially acts as like a discount on your tuition for that particular semester. Um, let's see here, visas. So this is kind of an important thing for St. Andrews. Again, in the, in the spirit of, of, of transparency, being prepared for, for this, any students who spend uh, more than, uh, than six months in the UK are required to obtain a, a visa. And in this particular case, you're applying for um, a UK student visa. You do this from the United States. Um, uh, unfortunately, those of you who are considering uh, UK for the year, you've got um, you know, great, uh, if you know, slightly expensive taste. It is one of the programs that has you know, a slightly higher visa fee. Um, so just again, as you're preparing in the planning process, students are responsible for these fees. I think the total right now is, is what you can see here. It's about 818 pounds. And that's the visa fee paired with um, the, the healthcare surcharge that grants you total access to the local um, uh, national health service. Uh, it's it's mandatory to purchase this um, this this healthcare surcharge. Um, um, there, uh, if you happen to be um, if you're not a U.S. citizen. Um, you want to check the immigration requirements for your um, particular country that issued your passport. Um, this is something that I'm happy to, to connect with resources to, to get you guidance there. Um, uh, so applying on is really straightforward. We mentioned this in the info session. You apply online at sa.holycross.edu. We design it to be as like, you know, again, straightforward as possible. Fill out an online profile. Um, so basic questionnaires and so forth. And then that personal statement that you submit where you talk about why St. Andrews is the, the, the program that you think is the best fit for you. Talk about, you know, how academically it, you know, you feel like it's a good fit, what sort of, you know, how it would support your development in your, you know, in your major and, uh, and what sort of things socially and culturally that, that, that appeal to you about the program. Um, it, this program requires one letter of recommendation and you'll also um, upload a copy of your um, unofficial transcript. As far as the letter of recommendation is concerned, we always uh, obviously urge students to make sure that they're reaching out to their faculty um, in advance of requesting them as their recommender in your online application, which is the way that you ultimately um, uh, you do that, you'll go into your, uh, there's like a button that you click to, to end, add a recommender in your online application. The second that you enter their information in there, it will auto send that faculty member via email a request to upload, uh, you know, uh, or instructions to submit a letter of recommendation. So before you do that, obviously, as a courtesy, you want to reach out to that, those faculty members in advance via email or in person in office hours and request uh, a letter of recommendation. Um, folks have asked often, you know, if it has to be a particular type of faculty member, the answer is no. For St. Andrews, um, it can be, uh, it can be any faculty member. The aim is to, you know, uh, have somebody who is familiar with your, um, with your work. Um, uh, often this ends up being a Montserrat professor, but it can be, it can be anybody that you've had a good experience with and, and, and is aware of, you know, it's familiar and can comment on your, um, your work as a student. Uh, just to emphasize, as we're doing in every info session, that if you do not have a passport um, or you don't have a valid passport, and by valid, I mean that um, it, uh, it does not expire 
um, uh, by January 2024, um, you definitely, uh, if it's, if it's due to expire before 2024, you must renew it. Um, if you don't have one, obviously you, you've got to get a new one. Um, we provided instructions for doing that. Cannot emphasize that enough. Really, really important to do that due to um, sort of uh, um, delays in processing time. Um, so um, I want to, uh, again, remind you that uh, uh, my colleague Piper is, the, is moving forward, going to be the main point of contact for St. Andrews. Um, uh, you can email her. She has uh, can, can give you you know instructions for you know setting up an appointment. She's uh, has lots of availability to and is excited to chat with you about it. Um, and um, I also want to then open things up to uh, to questions that anybody has about any aspect of the program about study abroad in general. Again, you have this uh, fabulous opportunity to um to ask questions directly of of a holy cross student who has been there from the student um you know perspective and so um if you all can don't mind those of you who are, are here if you could turn on your cameras just because to see just kind of make it a little bit more of a social interactive um thing that'd be awesome um and uh yeah want to uh, open the floor to any and all questions that you have No one likes to be first. I know there's questions. And if you if you have questions, you can just turn open, turn on your 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 uh, your mic and, and fire away. Awesome, awesome. Okay, um, if there are genuinely no questions, which I find very surprising, um, uh, I want to give um, Lucy uh, a chance to just share some, you know, parting thoughts. Uh, you know, maybe the last sort of, you know, pitch for for why students you think ought to be considering St. Andrews. Um, so you kind of opened the session talking about how it's probably the most similar to Holy Cross, and I would definitely agree with that, but also di disagree with it. With like, it's very, very much like a very big like community vibe kind of like Holy Cross um so everyone's like so so proud to like be a student of St. Andrews and even like returning here like everyone like knows what St. Andrews is so it's kind of cool to be able to say like I went there for a year um because it's kind of like a prestigious school and everything but um it's also so different than Holy Cross because like rather than just being in like kind of our gated campus. Like we go into Worcester sometimes, but we like get into the Uber or our car and we drive to Queens Cup and then we drive back and like, that's it. Um, St. Andrews, you're like, you are the community. So like I took golf lessons and as I'm walking there, I'm walking past the old course with all the old men and it's just really cool. And there's the little private school with all these little six year olds in their uniforms and you see their parents and like, you like are the community which is kind of cool um but I joke to all my friends even though we all know I'm not really joking but if I do get a master's I would totally go back and do it at St. Andrews um so I'm just so grateful that I got a year there and I hope that I will definitely be back super soon thank you so much we we owe you a debt of gratitude Lucy it's fabulous you're able to take time uh, out of your 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 day to to join us. Uh, lots of luck on the, starting the new position, and uh, and to all of you who uh, joined in on the session, uh, thanks so much for 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 staying here and for for listening. Uh, it's an it's a an awesome program. We urge you to to consider it. Um, and if you have questions moving forward, uh, thanks in advance to to Piper for fielding those, and uh, and for being here. And um, and yeah, and we we look forward to uh, to hearing from you all soon. Piper, any any final final comments? No, um, I, I would just say it's, it's um, I, I can't wait to watch that video again of the aerial shots. It was, that was fabulous. It's just the landscape wise, it's stunning. I really can't think of another place in the UK where we have a program that's so photogenic. Um, and uh, no, I, 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 everything, Lucy, your, um, your slides were wonderful. Thank you so much for, for putting all of that together. You, you really gave us a sense of what the opportunities are at, and um, socially and, and how, um, you know, and then how academics are structured and how that's different compared to Holy Cross. So thank you so much for, for volunteering your time. Yeah, of course. <laughs>
Well, if there are no further questions, uh, we'll go ahead and close out the session. But it, again, thank you so much for being here and uh, and good luck as you're navigating the, uh, the decision process. You all take care. Thanks. Bye, Chris. Bye, Piper. Thank you. Bye.